This is a lecture from Open Tuition. Okay, so let's go through and finish off this chapter with a really small part of the syllabus, but one that we have seen examined a few times uh, within section C of the exam, and it's looking at a group profit or loss on disposal. Now, I think the concept itself can be quite difficult to understand, but once you've understood the concept and then applied the calculations in a few questions, you tend to find that at this level anyway, it's relatively straightforward. When you get to the latter levels, then it gets a lot more complicated in terms of the disposal and the amount of shares that can be disposed of. But let's save that until later. And let's look at the scenario that we have in this paper. So what we've got is we're looking at group disposals. And, and that's the key, key word that I really want to, to highlight. We're looking at a situation whereby a parent has control of a subsidiary and it decides to sell the subsidiary. Now, what we've got to look at is, I suppose I'll, I'll draw it up, okay? Uh, if we've got a disposal, uh, there's going to be a disposal that takes place in the individual company accounts. So in the individual company accounts, what we've done is we've sold shares. So we've sold our investment in the subsidiary. If that's the case, then what you're going to have there is that there will be a profit or loss, very similar to what you have when you dispose of property, plant and equipment, when you dispose of PPE to work out the profit or loss on disposal, you take your proceeds and you deduct the carrying value of the PPE. Here, it's exactly the same. We're just disposing of a different non-current asset, that being the shares. So here, your profit or loss is the proceeds. Less. the value of the investment. That's it, nothing else to it. You take the proceeds and deduct the investment. Why do you compare it to the value of the investment? Well, that's what we're doing, aren't we? We are disposing of shares in the individual company accounts. Remember, go right the way back to when we started looking at group accounts, the parent bought shares in the subsidiary. So legally, it owns shares, but we then prepare the group accounts, don't we? So let's not worry about the group accounts just yet. We're looking at the individual company accounts. So here, that's P, isn't it? In the parent's individual company accounts, there's a profit or loss on disposal. Happy with that? Sure. Because what we need to go through and do here is that's when we've looked at it, if you like, from the legal form perspective. But what about when we look at things in substance? Because when we're looking at things in substance, we need to look... at the group accounts, don't we? And what actually happened there? Because in the group accounts, remember, we don't have that investment recorded at cost, do we? Yeah, that investment has been eliminated and been replaced by what? Brilliant. Yeah, the net asset of the subsidiary. So what we're doing here within the group accounts is that we have sold the net asset of the subsidiary. But don't forget there was an additional asset that we looked at and that was the goodwill, wasn't it? So we've disposed of the goodwill as well. So we've disposed of all of our shares within the subsidiary. So what happened previously is that we had control and in this scenario, the only thing you will see within this exam is whereby you have no control at all and you've got rid of all the shares. So we've gone, say, from 80% to 0% or 70% to 0 or 51% to 0. OK, so what we're looking at then is the sale of the net assets 
and the goodwill. So the calculation itself is very different when we go through and look at the substance of the transaction. as opposed to that legal form. So how do we go through and then look at calculating this profit or loss in the group accounts? Well, what we're going to calculate is a group profit or loss on disposal. So like we've seen previously, now, when we prepared the group accounts, we eliminated the investment. Well, here we're going to eliminate that individual company profit or loss on disposal and replace it with a group profit or loss on disposal. How do we calculate that group profit or loss on disposal? Well, you're given the pro forma within the notes there. And again, the key bit is that we are going to from control to no control. And that, in this exam, will always be 0%. We have no shares whatsoever. So, first of all, let's calculate that group profit or loss on disposal. So, remember, what we've disposed of within the group accounts is the net assets and the goodwill. So, we're going to take our proceeds. We're going to deduct the net assets at disposal. We're going to deduct the goodwill. And we control all of those, don't we? Okay, that's what we control. We now no longer have any control. So what have we received in exchange for giving up control over the net assets and the goodwill? Well, we've received our proceeds, haven't we? Now, just be careful. Let's just say, uh, as an example, let's just say that we previously owned 80%. That's what we had that gave us control over that subsidiary. Now, the proceeds that we receive will be worth that 80% ownership, won't it? But the key thing here is that not only have we disposed of the goodwill, the net assets of the subsidiary, but we've also got rid of the non-controlling interest. Now, here, the non-controlling interest will be 20%. And we're going to add that non-controlling interest to the proceeds because that will then give us 100% of the value of the subsidiary at the date of disposal. And then we can go through there and compare to what we have lost control of, which is 100% of the net assets and 100% of the goodwill. So when we're looking at our calculation, we take the proceeds, we add the non-controlling interest. We then deduct the net assets at the date of disposal and we then deduct the goodwill. And I think the hardest bit that people find to try to understand is that bit there, why we add on the non-controlling interest. The key reason is when we look at the proceeds, the proceeds are effectively our share. We've disposed of the subsidiary in its entirety so we need to look at what the subsidiary is worth in its entirety. So it's not only going to be equal to the proceeds, but also the value of the non-controlling interest at that date of disposal. And if you add those two figures together, that would always, in terms of the percentages, come to that 100%. Key thing, that, that's me going through and talking through the, the theory behind it and how it works and what we're actually doing. So, you know, what we are doing here it is this. That's what you'd be expected to do within the exam. It's cropped up previously for about three to four marks in section C of the exam. It, it was a pretty easy three to four mark to get. So let's just go through and pull it together with a brief example. So here uh, it says to calculate the group profit on disposal that will appear in the group financial statement of SOX group for the year ended. Is it the December 2017. Okay. Uh, so it says there that SOX uh, own 90% of MOGS. So if that's the case, you've got a 10%. 90% of 
non-controlling interest and decided to sell all of its investment. So that means we're going from 90% down to 0%. Uh, disposed of it at the end of the calendar year. December 2017, which is the same as the reporting date. So one other thing just to add in will be here is that you consolidate the revenues and costs of the subsidiary up to that date of disposal. So here, if we were preparing the group statement of profit or loss, then we'd have 12 months worth of revenue and cost of the subsidiary because we had control right the way throughout that 12 month period, didn't we? It was then at the end of the 12 month period it was sold and it went, but we've had control for 12 months, so we consolidate the revenues and costs in full. The key thing here is what happens if it was a mid-year disposal? If it was a mid-year disposal, we would only consolidate for the period that we did have control, whether that be three months, six months, nine months. So there'd be a bit of prorating of the revenues and costs. I think I've gone into that enough there. Uh, so what we need to do, uh, we're then told you've got your Proceeds of 200 million. So we're working in millions of dollars. So that's my 90%. I need to make it to 100%, don't I? So I'm going to add on the non controlling interest. So the proceeds were 200. The NCI was 15, and then we're told net asset to the data disposal 150, and goodwill is 38. So net asset to disposal with A150, the goodwill. Is there at 38? I think if you net all of that off, you get your group profit on disposal of $27 million, which would appear within the group statement of profit or loss, usually in its own line item. And if we're you know, really pushing it, which I don't think we would see so much with it within this level of the exam, technically it would fall under your discontinued operations. But I don't think we need to worry about that too much just for now. I think the key bit is to understand what we're calculating and how to go through and calculate it. Once you've done a few calculations, you should be fine. I think some of the difficult bits that, that, that might appear within an exam question is that you might not be given the net assets at the data disposal. So you might have to calculate them like we've done in our net assets working in the statement of financial position. So looking at your share capital, your share premium, and your retained earnings at the date of disposal. And similarly, you might not be given the non-controlling interest at that date of disposal. You'd have to take it and look at it in the same way that we calculate the NCI on the group statement of financial position where you take the NCI at acquisition, you add on the non-controlling interest share of the post-acquisition profit up to the date of disposal. But again, that might just be pushing it a little bit. You know, the, the, the examiner could even get you to look at the goodwill on acquisition and instead of giving you that figure, ask you to calculate it like we've seen when we've calculated the goodwill in our group statement of financial position questions. Yeah, we look at the cost, yeah, we then add on the non-controlling interest and then we deduct the net assets at the date of acquisition and deduct any impairments to date. So you can see that there's quite a linkage here between what the examiner might have up the sleeve with the linkage between what you see on the statement of profit or loss with the group profit or loss on disposal and then some of those figures that you see on the group statements of financial position. However, when it's cropped up in the exam so far from what we've seen, it was pretty okay, so don't worry. Other than that, I'll see you on the next chapter when we begin to look at associates. See you soon.